Nothing is enough for the man to whom enough is too little. Epicurus, 341 BC. Contentment comes not so much from great wealth as from few wants. Epictetus, 55 BC. It is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more, who is poor. Seneca, 1 year BC. And so the Stoics remind us that it is the endless wanting of things that make us poor and the satisfaction in what we have that makes us rich. Hello and welcome to the Growth Mindset Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about the problems with side hustles and just wanting more things and more stuff to do and the beauty in simplicity and less. This is certainly something we have spoken about before on the podcast, back in the season of complaining less, but I thought it's just a, such an important area that people constantly need reminding of, and I have some different experiences to share with people, and I have had some different experiences recently that I thought might provide some useful examples, so why the hell not? It is far too easy to be doing too much in the modern society of always on culture, get your side hustle, do your self-improvement, be the best partner, be the best father, be the best son. All of this stuff is kind of endless and feels like we can never do enough. And this is constant attention grabbing from your apps, from Netflix, from WhatsApp, Twitter, just news from every single part of the world. It's just constantly terrible, dramatic, and it's just anxiety inducing and not useful. It just leads to us spreading ourselves too thin. And just from the podcasting sort of society that I'm involved in, you can really see some people going too far with this, especially if they do actually get some success. They just seem to think that they have to crave for more and more rather than just being satisfied with what they have. And a while ago, I interviewed like a semi-famous person, let's say. He's got a TV show and a podcast and uh, writes books. Some of them are kind of okay. And he has a personal mission to help loads of people be happier. And no, it's not Mo Gordat before you uh, assume that, just to be clear. Anyway, this man appears on quite a lot of podcasts and he's constantly trying to be available to people. And he has a, let's say, a natural flair for speaking, which is cool. He can sound kind of poetic when he talks, but he does schedule his day to the nth degree just to try and squeeze every single second of his time to adding value and trying to make people happier, which is a very worthy cause but it's not exactly what he's actually doing. And you can kind of ruin your talent when you use it too much because during the interview, he just was very tired and had been doing too many things and just was quite boring for 90% of the interview with me. And we had 30 minutes together. He was like a few minutes late. He was anxious about what he had to get to next and just wasn't very present as a professional. And he wasn't very funny or that interesting. and. I mean, it wasn't a terrible conversation considering things. I mean, we did speak about some useful stuff, and, but like his, just, his expressions <laughs> were kind of boring. <laughs> so he just felt like a bit of a tired man giving me sort of some lists of stuff that he had answers to without the sort of depth that he could be capable of. And sure, I'm not going to pretend I'm like the most wonderful, perfect interview that's ever existed in the world. But the fact that my podcast grown from people that aren't as famous as him who I have been able to get very good stories out of does kind of indicate that I'm not a terrible interviewer, I guess. But anyway, I could see a glimmer of why he's great, but actually he wasn't radiating, let's say. And I do remember being in the interview, trying to listen to him and being like, yeah, I'm actually a bit bored right now. So anyway, another thing about him was that he also lets people schedule three minute calls with him which he'll let strangers do, which just seemed to me kind of odd because in three minutes, if you have a call with someone, how are you really going to get past your initial few minutes of trying to explain your problem? And like, all he's going to have is some quick like boilerplate advice that you'd give to anyone. It's not like he's going to change your life in a few minutes. I'd rather have a half hour conversation so with someone that actually listens to me and can like give me some useful advice than like one minute of someone just being like, yeah, just do this. And then like, that being it, it just seems like he's going out of his way to do too much, but actually not doing anything. And I just found the whole thing kind of pointless, but maybe it's all right for some people. But anyway, I just felt like he was wasting a lot of his time spreading himself too thinly and could just make much better use of his talent by just applying it a bit more directly. And before you think I'm like shitting on him, 
I guess it's just that it really contrasted with another person that I've been trying to get on the podcast who does say he's going to come on later this year, like Derek Sivers, who built and sold CD Baby. And he's also written quite a lot of books, which are some of my favorite all-time books ever. He doesn't run a podcast himself, but the podcast episodes that he does appear on have been some of the most downloaded podcast episodes ever. Now, he will answer any email that is sent to him, but he won't take like a random phone call. But he will only answer that email with like a few lines or directing you to something where he's already put like more thought into like a whole thinking model as a piece of a blog or a book that will like guide you around his general point of view on the question that you have. Now, if you want to get him on your podcast, you have to send him a list of questions that truly excite him and are worth his time answering because he doesn't just appear really quickly on a podcast. What he'll do is he'll spend two to six hours preparing the best answers he possibly can for that interview so that he shows up with his full intention, his full positivity and his full awareness to have the best stories he possibly can to be on your podcast. And that's why when he does appear on podcasts, they're some of the most downloaded podcasts ever because he just turns up with his full talent and his full brilliance fully available to him. And when you book in the interview time, he'll give you one to two hours of his time. He won't schedule anything before it or after it to make sure that he's always really present and energized. And it's just the complete opposite of this other man. And that's why when you hear Derek Sivers on an episode, you'll hear a really energetic guy who's just truly amazing, who is there to just truly amaze you with his best ideas and concepts that he can. And after you listen to him, you kind of just want to find more episodes that he's appeared on because of he's so damn interesting. And you may want to go and find some episodes with Derek Sivers on them after listening to this, because trust me, they are really good, as are his books. And the reason he's so great is that Derek Sivers doesn't spread himself thinly. He doesn't try to be everything to everyone. He is very concentrated. He is a thick, pasty experience that you get the full thing of. When you experience Derek Sivers, you get the full force of Derek Sivers and all his glory. And the reason I want to talk about this is because when you're doing things, are you doing them too much to the point where you exhaust yourself? Or are you doing them in a way that you can enjoy yourself? Because it is enjoyable to be someone who can show up with a bang and delight people. It's enjoyable to have positive energy for the things that you do. It's enjoyable to feel like you're giving everything that you do do your best shot. However, if you're doing too many things, you exhaust yourself. You'll cut yourself off from the source of your actual brilliance. You won't be able to put yourself forward when you're exhausted. You may experience lots more opportunities in the moment to be great, and yet you'll reduce your chances of ever being great in any given moment because you're exhausted. And when you're exhausted, you can't give your best shot at anything that you do. So when you do too much, you're more likely to feel imposter syndrome and feel that you aren't talented. The issue is that you're slicing your talent into a thousand pieces, trying to use it everywhere and actually just throwing it away. And an analogy that I came up with that if you want to break a window, you'll throw a rock at it and not a handful of dust. If you're doing a million different things, your energy is just sort of dissipating in small levels that aren't ever going to go above the threshold to do something properly. So your talent belongs together. And it was really sad talking to that first dude that I've spoken about and just seeing like the glimmer of his brilliance, but just him not like really being able to access it. And so whatever your talents are, just be mindful of how you can make your talent truly shine and don't overwork them and don't overwork yourself because you don't want to spread yourself too thin. So be kind to yourself and spread yourself thickly. Now, another recent experience I've had is that I've just come back from a hiking trip with a friend who was walking the entire coast of Britain. That's over 7,000 miles and it will take him probably over a year to do. And he's doing this to raise money for the mental health charity Mind. His name is Jamie Lloyd. You can find him on Instagram, right errant. If you want, I'll put the links in the show notes. Epic individual. And his mission is just, it's just full of difficulties for him to overcome every day. And also there's the, of course, the issue of the entire just physical difficulty of it all, just carrying all of his gear and food with him every day. And it really helps build the appreciation of simplicity because there's the saying of perfection is achieved not when there is nothing more to add, but when there is nothing left to take away. And when he's packing, Jamie is like, 
I don't need this. I don't need that. He's thrown away his first aid kit. He doesn't have gaffer tape. He doesn't have like extra maps. He doesn't have like anything just in case. Everything is essential to him every day or it's not in his bag because he can't take that stuff. Now, there's the other quote of you have, of you have succeeded in life when all you really want is only what you really need. And I think doing this adventure for Jamie is really like teaching him so much about what is essential in life versus what are the things that you just have because you think you need them. And he actually broke up with his girlfriend that he had who was like, actually, <laughs> turns out she does have some things that are actually just going to be incompatible with me. There's no point carrying on in this relationship. And yeah, he just seems to be learning so many different things. So I got to spend five days with him in the kind of beautiful simplicity of his life. And besides understanding the simplicity of like what you need on a day-to-day -day basis, there's also the simplicity of just He's got one major goal and that's it. All he's doing is trying to walk the entire coast of Britain and it's a huge goal, but he wakes up with every day and like he's either too tired to walk far or he isn't and he'll walk far. And it's not like he's trying to do five different projects and like balancing them all. It's just pretty clear goal. So some days he'll walk really far. Some days he won't walk so far and occasionally he will have the day off. But every day that he walks a mile is one mile less that he has to do. And he's just notching away at the total miles he has to do, slowly edging his way around Britain. And it's like this monumental task that when he started was just, I remember the first few months and it just looked like he'd gone nowhere. And then I didn't see him for a few months. And then just suddenly it's just like, bang, he's just gone so much further. It's just amazing to see how much you do when you just do a little bit every day. And often in life, we have these ideas for these big goals that we want to reach really quickly and we just won't put that much time into them or we'll give up after putting a bit of time into it or we'll get distracted by some other things that we'll start doing and like we just don't prioritize stuff when we're trying to do too many things but if we just keep going towards one major thing if we just inch towards our goal every day and just show up when we're tired or when it's hard everything that we do do towards a goal is progress if we just keep going and it's just so remarkably obvious for Jamie and what he's doing on his project that it's just very interesting to think about for anyone that has a big project, whether you're an entrepreneur or like you want to do a side hustle or like your career. So a year is a very long time that you can make a huge amount of difference on if you're working towards it, like a writer, a podcaster. But if it's just like a bit of a side project that you're not really thinking about and you're just not putting the hours into, you're just not going to move that needle very far at all. And you just see this so many times with people that they'll get lost is that they'll start something with a bit of enthusiasm and they just have a slightly too many things on. It's not that they, and it's not that they dislike the thing that they were doing. They just get a bit lost with a few other things. And like one difficult moment or difficult decision comes up, but they're just not quite sure what to do and like, as in what to make. And so they just sort of stop making any progress on the project. Whereas Jamie will have a day where there's no good option for him to do. He'll be like, okay, I've got to cross this river here or there. Either way, I'm going to get wet and it's going to be crap. I'm just going to do it. And you just have to deal with it because if there's no other option, whereas if you have a project that has a bit of an issue where you're like, you're not sure what to do about the rebranding and you just don't do anything, you just sort of stop getting enthusiasm for it and you'll just be doing other things. And it's just very easy to drop things when you're doing too much stuff. But if you're doing less and it's something that's important to you, you can just keep on dealing with the problems, even when there's a hard decision to make. And I think there's just something very noble and satisfying about having one really big goal that you chip away at daily and you can make progress on. It's just undeniable that if Jamie keeps on waking up each day and doing some walking, he will get to the end of his mission. Whereas there's so many things that we start in life that actually we may never actually finish. And even most of the things we probably won't finish. Another thing that I kind of appreciate is that all of the gear that he's using as I said, was very essential, but he also uses it to the max. Like he's going to wear through six pairs of hiking boots by the time he's finished. And he's had to replace lots of his kit and just made me reflect on how much hiking gear I've had that like never wore out. It just got old. Like I never even used it properly. Like I may have paid a hundred pounds, 200 pounds for something or $300, whatever you want to call it. Whatever you want to call it. And like most of that money went to it just like sitting somewhere in my house rather than getting like used to the point where it was actually no longer usable and had to be thrown away. And so much of our stuff that we buy without properly using it and so much of your life doesn't expire from use, but actually from lack of use and just sitting there. 
you do really just want to like do less stuff and have less stuff and do them properly and use it properly and make the most of everything that you have rather than trying to get involved with lots of different things that you aren't using or doing properly. So when we take on new things, we should really consider if we want to give our everything into it and do it properly like my friend Jamie or Derek Sivers, rather than be spreading ourselves really thin, trying to do a million things and wasting money buying lots of stuff and wasting our talent doing stuff that we're not going to do properly. So thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, I'm a podcaster. We like being rated, so you can leave me a rating. If you don't want to leave me a rating, you can wait for the show to improve. That's also fine with me. Life is to be enjoyed and enjoyment is not something that is to be put off to the future. It's something to start like right now. So um, do something that makes you happy. And whilst you're at it, be kind and lovely to everybody around you and the world will be a better place. Enjoy.